from the Lord. Amen. One that is qualified to preach. Amen. Ain't just start preaching. Amen. Ain't just know God. Amen. Grew up. Amen. In the house of the Lord. Understanding who God is and what. Amen. He wants of him. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He has. Amen. Glory to God. Been ordained as an elder. Amen. So he is. Amen. An elder. Amen. In the body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. He is also a professional. Amen. Amen. I said a word right. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, accountant by profession. Money, here we come. Amen. That's all right. I call it money, here we come. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And I am blessed. Amen. That he, amen, has graced us. Amen. Open up your hearts, faith and holiness. Open up your minds to hear and receive, amen, from God. He is a psalmist. Y'all like y'all sing. Amen. He can sing. Amen. Glory to God. And he's a keeper. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I, I, I am thankful. I'm just babbling, y'all, because y'all, I'm happy. Amen. I'm happy because I see what God is doing, and I'm going to stand back and watch him do I and I want what nobody got to say. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I bless the name of the Lord. I thank God for all of our leaders. Amen. In the house, Pastor Lines. Amen. Pastor Woodside. Amen. Prophetess Lines, Vanessa Ford, Amen. Minister Thompson, the Army Bangladesh World, Evangelist Susan, the Second Front from the Sack, all the people, Missionary Daffy, Amen, Glory to God, Hallelujah, Mother Zilpha, Amen, Glory to God, and Amen, I find, Amen, members of Faith and Holiness, Amen, the protocol team that, Amen, greeted you, Amen, Glory to God, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Will we bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And so please, amen, hear the word, the voice of God. Amen. That's going to speak in this house tonight. Amen. Without further ado, amen. Elder Rashad Lines, hear ye the word of the Lord. Come on, give the glory again. 
so we bless the name of the Lord. Yes, the Bible also tells me that he inhabits the praises of his people. So whenever you're looking for God, just know who ever praises Ah, Come on, put your hands together one more time. And that's all the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, God bless you. And we magnify you. Anybody been expecting a move tonight? Anybody really been expecting a move tonight? Hallelujah. We certainly give honor to God for Him allowing us to be here, standing in our right minds, with our faculties in place. We give Him thanks. We could have been in the mall, or perhaps in the graveyard in the tournament. But with His goodness and His mercy, He's kept us here. So that suggests to me that there must be purpose on our life. Amen. And we certainly thank God for the fragrance of your house. And the person of Apostle Persei, come and put your hands together for the woman of God. And for all of the ministers and the body of Christ that makes up the Reformation here. We want all of you, to the protocol team, to Amen to all of you. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. To my aunt who is here, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. A warrior and evangelist, a trailblazer woman. Amen. Amen. And other than that, missionary Maria Lines. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God for Minister Lines. Amen. Also to Minister Hope Paul and to all of you that are here. So let's move quickly into the word of the Lord. And let's go to the book of Romans. We're going to go into the 8th chapter. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get it. Perhaps you may be in your tablets or the galaxies. Or wherever you may have it, you may have an old fashioned Bible, Romans 8. And we're going to look starting at the 14th verse. And my text may be just a little bit different from yours as I'm reading from a different version for clarity. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it says at the 14th verse For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy, are not to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. This is the word of the Lord. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory for allowing us to come together in this fashion just another time. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will bless the people that came through the doors. God, allow them to live, transform, and change. God, let there be impartation, let there be changes. God, we thank you right now, God, for quantum leaps and paradigm shifts in the realm of the Spirit. God, we thank you, God, that yokes will be destroyed, chains will be broken, and minds will be set free. And liberated by your power, by your spirit. Now, God, touch this vessel in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm just an oracle. God, will walk through me, stand up in me, in the mighty name of Jesus. And as I speak, I will speak as an oracle, not out of my own intellect. God, but out of the womb of the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, now we dismiss and we expel and expose every demonic agency, every dark agency, every black power, every dark source. That is not a thing, O God, sent by you, God, we expel it out of this house. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we stand alive in this place. And let the enemies be scattered, God, we summon to your power, we summon to your spirit, we summon to your anointing to get the job done. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, now send your anointing, send your fire, God, open up, O God, the clouds of heaven, and begin to reign in this house. In the name of Jesus, God, from the pulpit to 
to talk and be you. Every individual, every boy, every woman, every girl that is represented here today, touch, set free, and will never give the mighty match this name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let everybody cry, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, you may be seated. And the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Praise the name of the Lord. I won't be before you too long, but just want to lay up a little bit of foundation so that you can understand what this particular scripture text is saying to us in Romans 8. And it uh, just like to highlight one more scripture on that particular verse, the 19th verse of Romans 8 that says, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. In this particular text that was read in your hearing, the Apostle Paul writes to the Roman saints and begins to teach and begin to uncover some of the revelations that speaks to the benefits or the entitlements of those who follow Christ. In the scripture text, Paul underscores that Christians and their present suffering on this earth, on this particular side of eternity, pales in comparison to God's glory that will be revealed. In other words, what he's suggesting to us is whatever your present circumstances may be, your formidable challenges, whatever it is that you're in, there is no comparison to what is just ahead of you. So given that life is full of such enormous sufferings and God's glory must be incomprehensibly wonderful. Considering everything that you endure as a bold soldier and considering the things that you have to go through during your earthly sojourn, it must suggest that if you are going through, you must be coming out into something else greater. Well, certainly this does not diminish the pain and distress or suffering that a believer may have to encounter in life's course. Nonetheless, Paul highlights the anguish but places more emphasis on what succeeds discomfort while keeping an eternal perspective. And so that suggests to me that my purpose is greater than my pain. Just you may not be able to touch them, but just nudge your neighbor and say, my purpose is greater than my pain. That's not the topic, but that's a good sidebar. Say it again. Say, my purpose is greater than my pain. So Paul continues in his letter and presents to the saints or Christians in Romans, the third chapter, the 26th verse. And he says that, Christians are not the only ones who long for the moment where suffering will be replaced by glory. In fact, the entire creation eagerly longs for it and they wait with great expectation for the unveiling of the sons of God. Generally, generally, Paul is marrying two points throughout the entire text of Romans 8. And in this chapter, he is bringing together condemnation and redemption. Judgment and salvation. He's bringing these comparisons to make a point. There's a scripture that says, Romans 8 and 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. This scripture says and text is saying to us that whenever a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, anyone makes a conscious decision to follow Christ and to take on the name of Christ, even though there may be some things that you have to endure, there is still greatness just behind it. It is also telling us that when you are walking in Christ, the law of sin had made us susceptible and also made us uh, 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 agents that uh, at any time can fall to the prey of death, sickness, and peril. And that is because of what happened back in the garden in Genesis 1. 
with Adam and Eve. After the fall of man, because of the fall, we lost a lot of our power, our dominion. But Jesus came and he restored that power back to us. And so through Christ, we are joint heirs and we are entitled automatically. We are entitled to the redemptive power. We are entitled to victory. Because one thing about being a glory carrier, when you carry the glory, a byproduct of the glory is winning. Somebody say yes, Lord. I also want to highlight Romans 8 and 18. It says, consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation. I want you to get this in your spirit. For the creation waits, meaning humanity, all humanity, waits in eager expectation. They sit. They are waiting. They await the revealing of the children of God. But with reason. And the question may be asked, why are they waiting? They are waiting because the people and the children of God that have to be revealed, they're carrying something. May I suggest to you that perhaps all of the things that you've faced, the tears that you've cried, the loved ones that you've lost, the possessions that you may have lost, the friends that you may have lost, the shifts that may have taken place in your life, may have been just because not of who you are, not because of who you connected to, not because of your social and economic status, but maybe it's just because, just a minute, it's because of what you're carrying. The devil is not so much concerned with who you are. He's not concerned about your economic status. I'm okay, just hold for me. He's not concerned as to whether or not you have a six-figure annual salary. Whether you live in Bain Town or either if you live out life for King. He's not concerned about whether or not you live in the hills or in the valley. But what threatens the enemy is when you are carrying something that is a threat to his kingdom. Never mind your stature or how good you may appear. He's not even considering that. Because that's not a threat. But when he comes into contact with somebody that is loaded, packing power, then he is afraid and he is terrified. Now to the people that are in here and even those that may be listening we all have been going through a season of pain a season of anguish a season of discomfort a season of trying to understand why when what well my subject tonight is I'm in labor Somebody, I'm in labor. Open up your mouth to somebody else and tell them, I'm in labor. To be in labor. To be in labor. Before you get there, it means that you must be pregnant. Now, I'm a man, so I won't ever experience that in this life. Full man. But to those that are women in here who have ever born a child and carry it, you know when you are approaching your maturity date. You understand that something is going on with me. And whenever you are carrying, anybody can tell when somebody is pregnant. Because your features even start to change. There are some visible notifications. There are some indications to let even those that are around you know that they're carrying something. 
You can be as beautiful as Halle Berry. Some persons have very, very good pregnancies, but even if they carry well, without any visible changes to their face, perhaps they have some type of morning sickness, or they may have to endure some pains, unable to sleep. Some level of discomfort is going to be associated with carrying a child or being pregnant. But in this context, we are speaking about carrying something that is supernatural. And so the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God, for them to be revealed. Because there is something that every one of us in here tonight is carrying. There's something that has been deposited into everyone's life, into your spiritual homes, that has already probably come to full maturity. And you are feeling bouts of discomfort. You're feeling pain. You're feeling anguish. You're irritable. You're miserable. And you're saying, God, I want the pain to over. He said, you want the pain to over. I need a messenger. You may be saying, God, I need deliverance. He said, you want deliverance? Well, I need a yes, Lord. What are you carrying tonight? What are you pregnant with? I believe that every one of us that really mean Jesus down in the homes of our souls are pregnant with a yes, Lord. A yes to his will. A yes to his way. A yes to the assignment of the Lord. Now, how do you know when you are in labor? Spiritually. Things around you start to get out of sort. There's chaos all around. And if there isn't chaos all around, personally, if there, any, if there are any internal, I guess, internal uh, effects or, or influences, then perhaps there may be some external effects or contributors. At this point, I want to take us back to 1 Samuel. And I think it's somewhere in the 17th chapter. We must also take note that while you are carrying, when there are some persons that are cognizant that you're carrying something, everybody isn't going to be happy about your pregnancy. Every, everybody's not going to be happy with the fact that you're carrying something. And I always used to hear mothers say, never abort your child because you just don't know what you're carrying. Never abort what is in you because you just don't know what you're carrying. So I want to just park here for a minute and talk a little bit about David. David, as we know it, was a shepherd boy. I'm going to keep on getting right back to the text. David was a shepherd boy, insignificant in his brother's eyes. Because of what he did and also because of his stature, he was a very short man. But there were three brothers that David had by the name of Shema, Abinadab, and there's another brother. And uh, they fought inside of Saul's army. Eliab is the third one. They fought in Saul's army. And Saul at the time was confronted by this uncircumcised Philistine by the name of Goliath. Now one day, Jesse, who was the father of David, sent him out and said, David, take these ten loaves. Take some food to your brothers because they need some, some food. They need some energy because they're fighting in Saul's army. And David went there only following the instructions of his father. And when he got there with those baskets, David started eavesdropping a little bit. And while David was eavesdropping, he overheard this conversation about how Saul's army and how the people were trying to strategize to take down this Goliath. A lot of persons were fearful of Goliath, terrified of him. But when David 
David heard about it. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that coming up against my God? David, in other words, maintained this posture like a bold soldier. He was not a part of the army. He was not drafted in, but he was pregnant. He was carrying something that his brothers didn't have. David was carrying an anointing. But maybe his brothers overlooked him because he was a keeper of the sheep. He saved on the backside of a mountain watching the flock graves. He stayed on the backside of a mountain tending to the flock. And in his brother's eyes, perhaps that was insignificant. But during the course of David's walk, what God was doing was building character. What God was doing was stripping David down and putting in a spirit of humility. He was teaching David something that he needed not for where he was, but for where he was going. See, David was a shepherd boy. And he knew that in the future, at some point, even though David was a shepherd boy, down the line in the future, he would be a king. So where you are right now, everything that you are enduring right now is simply training. You are just going to an exercise course. It's a tactical, tactical course. Not for where you are, but for what you are going to. Say yes, Lord. So anyway, David's brothers, they got upset after he started to talk about Goliath and to inject himself into the formula and so he was going to overthrow him and so they became in themselves they got upset and so their response to David was David go back home because you only came to drop off these loaves maybe somebody is telling you you're insignificant do what you came to do and keep your mouth closed but then you are carrying an anointing and then the glory of God is upon you you have to cry aloud and spare lost obey David a mere shepherd boy looked at the corner of his brother's eyes as an insignificant factor the little that they know before David was even sitting in the seat he was already carrying the anointing you remember the story huh? when Jesse was visited by the prophet Samuel Samuel told him go and fetch all of your sons I'm a paraphrase of He said, go get your sons. He brought everybody except David. I don't think, I don't think Jesse was senile. I don't think he was retarded. And I certainly don't think he was blind. Because if he knew he was there, but sometimes people will discount the anointing on your life because they know what you're carrying. They can see sometimes even greater than you can. But you are thinking that you're insignificant, not knowing that there's a glory on you. So, what happened was, Jesse called all of the sons, including the three, Musketeers, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shaman, you know, the criticizers of David. And they were lined up, they were robust men. Their stature told you that they just looked as though there was a victory in them. Their very appearance was intimidating because they were tall, they were robust. But David was just a puny, little small little lad. So I guess Jesse didn't decide to call him to the feast. But what happened was, when the prophet Samuel began to move around, the spirit of discernment had to come upon the prophet. Jesse, he said, are all of your sins, your sons here? He said, uh, there's all but one. There's one that remaining, and he's out keeping the sheep. And he's, he's rudy. And he doesn't smell too good. I don't know if you, you really want me to bring that one because 
the condition he's in, I don't think he's going to fit the mold. But the hand of the Lord was upon David. David had an anointing on him. Thank <laughs> you. 
Lord is sending the women here to cultivate and to be his single people, to be kindled what's inside of you. And I believe that the power of God is going to destroy every yoke that's in your life. I don't have the power to do it. God got the power to do it. Every witchcraft spirit that has been sent to kill you, God got the power to destroy you by fire. Lift your hands to the heavens. Don't you know there are weapons of mass destruction in the realm of the spirit? God got hail. God got fire. He got lightning. He got rain. He got water. He got the power to wipe out every command, every evil spirit, every enemy out of your way. Say yes to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So no, no, that there won't be any ectopic pregnancies. Ectopic pregnancies, mothers, you know, where the baby or the mistaken process starts to take place in the fallopian tube. But I gotta get to the uterus. Won't be no miscarriages. And I can tell you tonight that maybe there's some traps or imps and some entities that are strategizing and devising plots to see to it that you miscarry. But God got some big wives that are standing in the gap. He got some big wives that are arm and dangerous. Know that long to let it go. And trust in case. Midwife. The and gynecologist tonight is Jesus Christ. So if you have a midwife, if you have a prayer warrior that's packing you up or covering you, Jesus already prayed for you in the body. He already interceded and he came with the victory. Receive it tonight. Receive your victory. Receive it. It's time for the liver. It's time for the liver. I said the liver. Oh, 